Flora Knight Yajik, and welcome to the Eruolus Breathing and Meditation Program. I want to extend a very warm welcome to all the readers of my books, all the readers who have followed my publications on the internet, all of you who have listened to various radio interviews over the years, and an especially warm welcome to those who have never heard of me and are getting acquainted via this video. I want to begin with a quote from George Gurdjieff. This is from In Search of the Miraculous, Fragments of an Unknown Teaching, which was a record of his experience with Gurdjieff written by P.D. Uspensky. Gurdjieff said, Write exercises which lead to the aim of mastering the organism and subjecting its conscious and unconscious functions to the will. Begin with breathing exercises. Without mastering breathing, nothing can be mastered. At the same time, to master breathing is not so easy. But aside from these very brief remarks, he didn't give us much in the way of indications or clues about exactly how one was to go about mastering their breathing and therefore being able to master their will. Breathing exercises are an integral part of yoga training and have been for centuries. It is claimed that mastering breath can produce almost instantaneous changes in an individual's physiology. And there have been many reports of yogis who mastered this kind of breath training, who could perform extraordinary feats of endurance or production of heat, or to be able to endure long periods of physical discomfort or exercise or exertion. Yet we come back to what Gurdjieff said, that right exercises, which lead to the aim of mastering the organism, begin with breathing. Without mastering breath, nothing can be mastered. And of course, at the same time, mastering breathing is not so easy. A Dr. Richard Brown, Associate Professor of Clinical Psychology at Columbia University, gave a talk in February of 2005 at the University of Massachusetts. In this talk, he spoke about stress. He said that stress is a worldwide epidemic. The number one disease of adults in the world is depression. Depression is the most extreme form of stress. He further said that if you have significant anxiety, you have twice the risk of a heart attack. If you have significant depression over time, you have four times the risk of a heart attack. He added that stress can also increase the risk of cancer at an early age. Well, we all know that we live in a stressful world. The stress response is vital for survival in times of danger. The problem only comes in when it is turned on too much, too strong, and too often. Stress increases dangerous inflammatory factors called cytokines. It damages the hippocampus and causes memory loss. Stress can cause mood disorders. It can reduce the brain's ability to repair itself. It can increase abdominal fat. It can, it can interfere with thyroid function. It even increases the stickiness of the blood which can lead to blood clots, heart attacks, or strokes. So all of those things are the bad things about stress. But let's go back to that idea that the stress response is vital for survival in times of danger. We need to think about the world we live in and the dangers we face. Obviously, our stress responses are telling us something, individually, socially, globally. There is danger out there. There is danger everywhere. And we all need to understand why that danger is there. Why our bodies are responding to stress. Our ancestors were not routinely exposed to the types of poisons that we encounter in our daily environment. We have not evolved the proper physiological machinery to break down these toxins. Today, humans are exposed to more toxic chemicals than at any other time in their evolution on this planet. Early in the 20th century, farmers didn't try to kill all the insects in any given region. They accepted the fact that insects would be more numerous in some years and at some times. 
During the bad years, they sprayed some pesticides that were toxic to the insects, but not very deadly to people. But during the 1940s, DDT and other related petrochemicals were developed into sprays for killing malaria-carrying mosquitoes. These new pesticides were very effective. They destroyed many mosquitoes and also the helpful insects and many other species. DDT-type pesticides were cheap and could be produced from plentiful crude oil supplies. Farmers, corporations, and consumers were excited by this. Now they could kill all the bugs, save all the crops, and make lots of money. In the cities, people were spraying DDT everywhere. If the first spraying didn't work, you could spray again, kill even more bugs. These people didn't realize that the bugs had tremendous reproduction capacities, and some of them always survived, and those that survived produced millions of baby bugs that were not affected by the poisons. So we are immersed in a poisonous environment because petrochemical toxins are fat-soluble. They permeate all biological membranes, including human skin, the skin of fruits and vegetables. Toxic chemicals saturate our food. They saturate the newspapers that you read and handle with your hands and then touch your body. The cars that you drive load the air with toxic chemicals. Computer chips that drive office machinery. You know, if you set up a computer or television, take it out of the box, set it up, turn it on, you can smell the toxic solvents evaporating off the equipment for weeks. Poisons are everywhere. On the vegetables you eat, the office where you work, the schools where you study, and even in your home. Nietzsche once said that if it doesn't kill you, it will make you stronger. But there's another saying, the straw that broke the camel's back. Anybody, at any time, can become overwhelmed by physiological stress. Toxic bodies. That's one of the main contributors to the stresses in our environment. And as I mentioned, human beings did not evolve in a toxic environment, either physically or psychologically. So we have psychological stressors, fear responses, and we have physical stressors from the toxicity in our environment that makes us less able to withstand the psychological stress that we are subjected to. And we go round and round and round, getting more and more stressed every day. We've talked a great deal about detoxing the body on our websites, and of course our main work is focused at detoxing the mind and the emotions, sorting out unhealthy programming from childhood, from society, from religion, helping the person free up their creativity so he or she can face our reality with some equanimity and balance. But clearly, the storm of toxicity in our world has increased to such a pitch that we need stronger methods and techniques. And that is what this program is all about. That is what we are going to talk about today. There is something very simple you can do to alleviate the effects of stress and assist the detoxification of your body, mind, and emotions. Well, it's not exactly accurate to say simple because it does need application and consistent application. But in a certain sense, it is simple. You just simply stimulate your vagus nerve. The vagus nerve controls the relaxation response through the transmitter acetylcholine. Vagal nerve stimulation therapy using a pacemaker-like device implanted in the chest is a treatment that's been used since 1997 to control seizures in epilepsy patients. Now get this, they are using a pacemaker-like device surgically implanted in the chest to stimulate the vagus nerve which controls seizures in epilepsy patients and there are simple ways to stimulate the vagus nerve yourself. In this device, every two to five minutes, this little machine stimulates the vagus nerve, causing your diaphragm to contract. It's recently even been approved in the U.S. for the treatment of depression and works about as well as antidepressants. 
problem is it has to be surgically implanted and this little gadget is going to set you back by about $25,000 and I'm not sure that that includes the surgical implantation either. And it only stimulates the left vagus nerve and it only affects a small portion of the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve stimulation may also be achieved by what is called a vagal maneuver. One of these vagal maneuvers consists of just holding your breath for a few seconds, as you do when you want to stop the hiccups. Another is dipping your face in cold water, coughing sharply, tensing your stomach muscles as if to bear down to have a bowel movement. Patients with supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, and other illnesses are being trained to perform these vagal maneuvers to keep their heartbeat regular. Studies have been done on the effects of electronic vagal stimulation, and these have shown that this little gadget induces the release of hormones such as prolactin, vasopressin, and oxytocin. Oxytocin is known as the cuddle hormone. If a group of animals come together in a social context, they release a lot of oxytocin. It's also released during childbirth and during sexual activity, as well as during breastfeeding. Serotonin reuptake inhibitors, that is, antidepressants, activate oxytocin release. So let's think a little bit about this vagus nerve. If stimulating the vagus nerve is the key to sorting out your stress, as we imagine from all of the above details, I think we need to know just a little bit about where it comes from and what it does. The vagus nerve enters the brain stem. It then splits into what's called an upper root that stimulates the thalamus, which affects the cortex, which is the thinking part of your brain, and a lower path that goes into the limbic system or the emotional brain. Once again, we are reminded of the fact that stress is a response to danger in the environment. It's the species-specific programmed reaction to threats to our survival. We need to think about the fact that all of us are feeling some sort of reaction to something in our environment that scares the hell out of us. And it is species specific to the majority of human beings to be feeling this right now with our world in its present state and on its present trajectory. Otherwise, there wouldn't be an epidemic of stress and stress-induced disease. But there is a small minority that apparently do not feel this species specific reaction to the conditions of our world. In fact, they seem to be in charge of creating those conditions. I think that you should give that just a little bit of thought. Our bodies are telling us something, and we need to be listening. In the meantime, we need to learn how to deal with our stress. So back to our vagus nerve. Both the right and the left vagus nerves descend from the brain in the carotid sheath lateral to the carotid artery. The carotid artery, as you may know, is that artery on the side of your neck where you can put your fingertips and you can feel your heartbeat there. It extends through the jugular foramen down below the head to the neck, chest, and abdomen where it contributes to the innervation of the viscera. That is, it's connected directly to your gut. Stimulating the vagus nerve, you can affect the high root from the thalamus to the cortex. When you affect the cortex in this way, you produce what is called sensory motor rhythm, or SMR. This is an activated pattern in the parietal cortex that is associated with the state of relaxed vigilance. In other words, it makes you very aware and very alert, but at the same time, you are relaxed and not stressed. Animals or humans exhibiting SMR show improved sleep, digestion, thinking, and memory. It's also been said that this SMR state prevents you from craving drugs and overeating. Apparently, you can achieve all of these benefits by self-stimulation of the vagus nerve via controlled breathing exercises. Remember, the left and right vagus nerves pass between the trachea and the esophagus. Breath training that induces stimulation of the vagus nerves reduces sympathetic nervous system over arousal. It increases parasympathetic nervous system activity, which is the relax, recuperate, and regenerate system. This calms you down. 
The important key here is that the beneficial effects of controlled breathing on the vagus nerve occur primarily during exhalation. During exhaling, your heart rate decelerates, and during the period of deceleration of the heart, the vagus becomes active. Shallow, rapid breathing patterns inhibit the vagus because the period of vagal activity is too short. By slowing down your breathing, you create more vagal activity, accentuating its relaxing and regenerating effects. Not only is breath the engine of the sounds that we make, deep inhalations and exhalations are inextricably linked with emotionality and altered states. To the Chinese, breath had the metaphorical importance that we give to blood. To them, breath was life. To breathe was to be. And to breathe deeply was to move your chi, which was considered by them to be the energy of your soul. The diaphragm is your primary breathing muscle. It's a thin, wide sheet of muscle that separates your thoracic cavity from your lower abdominal cavity. It has a high dome shape when it contracts as it does when you breathe, or should be doing when you breathe. It flattens out. In other words, it's like a plunger. It's like a high domed rubber thing, and then when you smash it flat, it creates pressure in one direction and creates a suction, a vacuum, in the upper thoracic cavity, since the watery viscera, your intestines, and so forth, cannot be compressed, they get out of the way. And where do they go? They go out. The abdominal contents are forced down and out so that when you inhale with your diaphragm, your belly expands. That is why good breathing practice is usually described as abdominal breathing or belly breathing. Now, everybody in Western culture is upset by the very idea of having a bulging belly. We spend our time going around sucking it in and keeping it flat, and people naturally, as a result of social and cultural programming, tend not to want to breathe with their bellies. So they breathe very shallowly so that their belly won't move. This is very bad. When people don't breathe well, they tend to breathe in reverse. That is, the movement of their abdomen during respiration is the opposite of what is normal and healthy. Instead of letting the belly move outward during inhalation, they try to suck it in. And when they exhale, they are no longer in any danger of having their belly bulge out and make them look bad, so that's when they relax it. So everybody is breathing in reverse. In other words, most people don't use their diaphragms to breathe. Now the thing is, exhaling without the diaphragm is not a big deal. It's inhaling that's the problem. Without inhaling with the diaphragm, it's very hard work for your body because somehow or other, you're going to have to get the rib cage to lift and expand so that you can create that vacuum so that the lungs will fill with air. The only muscles that are really designed for serious rib lifting are the intercostals, and they can only do so much. People end up recruiting the pectoralis minors, the sternocleidomastoids, and the scalene muscles. Imagine a handful of muscles the size of pencils trying to lift your rib cage several times per minute, all day long, every day, day after day, week after week, year after year. Given their privileged position and peculiar significance, the scalenes are powerful agents of change and release of emotional states. Linked to this is the fact that these muscles are controlling the neck, and the neck is where the vagus nerve passes between the trachea and the esophagus. Now, in order to stop breathing with your chest and throat muscles, which is the wrong way to breathe, even though this is what many people do, you have to relearn how to breathe with your diaphragm. This is a little bit hard because the diaphragm is a muscle you can't see. You can't feel it directly. It's this big sheet of muscle that divides your thorax from your lower abdominal cavity, way inside your body. 
It's not like a muscle in your arm which you can tense and feel directly what's doing. To learn to use your diaphragm, you have to make results visible. Lie down on your back, place the book on your belly, and then take a deep breath. Remember, the object is not to move this book by tensing your belly muscles. The object is to move the book by pushing down on the viscera and having the viscera force the book to move up. It's absolutely impossible to contract your diaphragm without your belly moving out. So if you're doing this correctly, that book should move up and down. Usually, when you first try this, you can get the book to move hmm, two inches. You want to work on this to the point where you can get that book to move at least four inches every time you contract your diaphragm and take a breath. The object is, again, to move the book with your breathing, not by clenching some abdominal muscles and forcing the book in the air. It must be done by the act of breathing. If you think back and remember, in early childhood, whenever you felt like you were in trouble, you just knew you were in trouble, or whenever you felt stressed, when something went wrong, or you were being oppressed or punished, or something bad was happening around you, a situation was unpleasant or uncomfortable, you were probably holding your breath. As you grew older, and you became aware of the sociocultural norms of having a flat stomach, Added to this was the increased tendency to suppress your breathing. So all through your life, you've learned to breathe the wrong way. Shallow breath and emotional constipation go together. If you breathe shallowly, you're emotionally constipated, and that's all there is to it. And they can only be fixed together. Obviously, the best cure for shallow breathing is learning how to breathe deeply. Bioenergetic, or round breathing, was pioneered in a psychotherapeutic context by Carl Jung and popularized by his student Alexander Lowen. It's also similar to what the Chinese refer to as round breathing. When you exercise, there is a strong metabolic demand for intense respiration. Your body needs oxygen, and it needs it more urgently, and it also needs to get rid of carbon dioxide and other cellular respiration byproducts. In such a situation, breathing very fast and hard makes sense physiologically. However, when you breathe hard just for the heck of it, without some physical demand being made on your body, something completely different happens. Hyperventilation type breathing tends to cause three allegedly harmless but definitely alarming side effects, paresthesia, tetanus, and tremors. Our breathing program is not based on hyperventilation, though there are small sections of it where quick breathing is going to be employed. If this quick breathing makes you the least bit uncomfortable, do not do it. You will see that our faster breathing phase is much slower than hyperventilation and is controlled and preceded and followed by very deep breathing techniques so that the vagus nerve can be properly stimulated. I think that you can get rapid, better, more enduring results with my program and my experience and the experiences of many others that I've worked with show that deep, regular breathing with long periods of exhalation with emptying the lungs completely and carefully each time you breathe and also using the proper meditation techniques will safely and rapidly get you to where you want and need to be in control of your stress and therefore your life. Doing regular, deep breathing exercises, as I'm going to teach you, may indeed lead you to emotional releases. Maybe not the first time you practice, but there will be deep emotional releases at some point in your exercises. Sometimes they happen in dreams. Many people feel like crying, feeling sad or angry and frustrated or calm in experiences at one point or another in the regular practice of this program. Some people may feel like they want to hit something, and having a big fluffy pillow on hand for that purpose is very therapeutic. For most of us, oceans of sadness exist inside us, oceans of pain because of the hurts that we have experienced and the realization of the hurts that we've done to others. 
These kind of things can be deeply released if you practice controlled breathing regularly. And once they are released, they no longer lurk in your subconscious, controlling your emotions, causing anxiety, depression, fear, panic, and other life-destroying emotional states. The big difference between the way it is done in yoga and the way I am going to teach you is that you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. There is a reason for this. Many years ago, I was taught a nifty hypnotic technique where the instructor told the class that breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth induced right and left brain synchronization. So I prefer to call my technique pipe breathing to distinguish it from ujjayi breath because effectively that is what it is. When you practice pipe breathing, you breathe with the glottis partly closed. The glottis is the opening at the upper part of the larynx between the vocal cords. It's another muscle in the body that you can't see, yet you use it all the time. The glottis is the combination of the vocal cords and the space between them. When you speak, you are deliberately vibrating the vocal cords, and air is passing through the glottis. And when you sing, you are performing some amazing glottal maneuvers. But here we want to constrict the glottal opening just a little bit, not enough to produce actual sounds as in speech or singing, but enough to get almost to the point of producing sound. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's easy. Now, when you speak or sing, all kinds of muscles in your throat go into action. And if you pay close attention to it, you will notice that the constricting of the glottis preparatory to emitting a sound is also accompanied by other constriction feelings in the throat. This is very similar to the feeling you get just before and just after you swallow. And it's especially pronounced if you swallow something very cold. Say you take a drink on a hot day and you go, <sighs> or, ha. <sighs> so you have at that ha moment, you have that ha, <sighs> ha. Constriction on your pharyngeal passage is just a slight constriction in the, in the entire passage. Say, ha. Say, ha, ha, and feel the constriction. Ha, ha, ha. And when you do it, sometimes you can hear, you can feel the glottis vibrating just a little bit, almost to the point of producing a real speech sound. Ha, ha. Hear that? Hear it vibrate? Now we want to back off just a bit so that your throat is in this constricted state but not to the point of producing sounds. It's like what you do when you want to blow a little steam onto your glasses just before you wipe them. Let's have a pair of glasses here, see? And you go... Now... Did you feel that? Now, if you've really gotten some focus on that feeling of constricting the glottis, and you can hold that constriction during the entire time you're breathing in and out, then you are pipe breathing. Okay, now let's try it. I'm going to try to demonstrate this. And it's not going to be so easy because I'm going to try to breathe with a little bit of an exaggeration so that it comes through on the sound system a little more clearly. Let's try breathing with your mouth closed. Breathe in through the nose with that constriction in place. Now remember, get the constriction right. You know, it's the... Okay, hold that, hold that constriction. And then close your mouth. And while you're holding it, breathe in through the nose.
Okay, got that? Let's try it again. Get your constriction set up. Now. Can you do that? Okay, let's do it again. Get your constriction set up. Like you're blowing on your glasses, you know. Now keep your constriction, hold it. Okay. Now, that's what it sounds like when you're breathing in with that constriction. Now, let's do it breathing out through the mouth. As soon as you breathe in, I'm going to, I'm going to have to breathe in first in order to demonstrate it. So I'm going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth so that you can hear how it sounds when you breathe out with the constriction. Okay, ready? Did you see what I did? You breathe in through the nose, and then you slightly part your lips and breathe out through slightly parted lips. And then when you go to breathe in again, your lips just naturally close. And then, see? Now, it sounds a little bit like Darth Vader, or it sounds like the way you breathe when you're just going to sleep and you're almost on the verge of sleep and maybe you snore a little bit. Okay. Now, let's try breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, only we're going to make a very breathy ha sound, okay, as we exhale. This is going to help you to have a practice. Okay, let's do it. That's going to help you with this, practicing this out breath. Okay, now let's try it without the ha sound again, because that ha is just to teach you how to feel that constriction. Ready? Now that's how it's done. Now we're going to try it to a count. Okay? It's a little strange at first. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. And once you do, you'll be doing efficiently what we call pipe breathing. What we're going to do with pipe breathing when we get into the next segment of the program is we're going to use it in various positions, doing various activities, and you're going to be asked to do it to a count. You're going to be asked to breathe into a particular count, hold, and then out to a particular count. Now it's a little hard for me to count and breathe at the same time, so I'm going to be thinking my count while I demonstrate this for you. Then I will tell you the count. Ready? Let's go. Now the count for me was in, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, and so on. <clears throat> 
It really depends on how fast you count or how slow you breathe, what numbers you get. I prefer this count because the numbers are easy to remember. Six in, three hold, nine out, which is just a little bit longer than the six in, and then three for the hold. And when I use the word in, that counts as one number. So in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. See, so that the word is, is standing in place of a number. So some of you may be able to do it longer than I can do it. You may be able to breathe deeper than I do. Or maybe some of you are not able to breathe as long as I do. You may have a little trouble exhaling as long as I do. But you notice what I do is I exhale for this long count and I just keep pushing the air out, emptying my lungs. Did you notice that the exhalation portion of the breath is longer than the inhalation? It is during that exhalation portion that your vagus nerve is being stimulated and this is the most important factor and this is why the exhalation is a little longer. So let's try it one more time. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, hold, two, three, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, and stop, relax. Belly breathing. That's the basic breathing technique of pipe breathing, and it is the most important part of this program, second only to the meditation portion. You need to be practicing this as often as you can. Whenever you feel stressed, sitting at your desk, riding in your car, if you feel particularly tired, you notice yourself yawning a lot or taking deep sighing breaths <sighs> because you feel like you're not getting enough oxygen, you can immediately employ this breathing technique and begin to stimulate your vagus nerve, which then puts you into that state of alert restfulness. Alert and aware, but at the same time relaxed and restful. Also remember that when you are doing this, you are supposed to be breathing with your diaphragm. Always belly breathe. So you've got several exercises that you can practice immediately. You've got your belly breathing exercises, you've got your, bre your, your pipe breathing, and practicing breathing with uh, the diaphragm. Remember lying on your back with the book on your belly with your knees up and learn to push that book up and down. Get, see if you can get it to move three or four inches just by the act of breathing. Then practice your pipe breathing. You can practice pipe breathing and stimulate your vagus nerve. With practice, you can even get the pipe breathing so smooth that you can do it in such a way that you make almost no sound at all while you're doing it. That way you can even do it at your desk at work even if somebody sits close to you. If your boss comes in, puts a deadline on you, you have to work late, or he tells you that your pay is going to be cut 20%, your vacation has been canceled, you can immediately begin pipe breathing and reduce your stress. When you do practice your pipe breathing exercise, do it in groups of 12. Do 12 breaths, you know, in and out 12 times. And of course, in each pipe breath, you in, hold, out, hold. And then after the set of 12, just return to your normal be belly breathing, which you should be doing all the time anyway. You can do pipe breathing several times throughout the day if you need to. This practice will enable you to control your stress anytime you want or need to. And that really is how simple it is. It just needs application. You need to learn how to do it, and then you need to apply it. And you will be astonished at the results. But of course, the most astonishing results are going to come to you when you put the pipe breathing together with the breathing exercises and with the finishing touch, which is the meditation program. And I think you're going to be more than amazed at the results that you're going to be having in your life from practicing Eruolus breathing and meditation program. So this is the end of the introductory portion of the program. You'll need to have practiced pipe breathing a number of times before the view the next segment in which we're going to lead you through the exercises that are going to show you how to use the breathing technique in special ways. These will help your body to begin the process of detoxification. 
Following that will be the super powerful meditation technique. I use it myself. I developed it over 20 years ago. And the results in my life have been extraordinary. Hello and welcome to part two of the breathing exercises program. I'm going to assume that you have listened to part one that teaches you one of the basic breathing techniques that is going to be used in this video. If you haven't listened to part one, please do so because otherwise you probably won't know what to do or how to follow the instructions. This video is going to be in three basic parts. Part one is going to show you a simple series of relaxation exercises that utilize some of the breathing techniques in preparation for doing what is called three-stage breathing and then warrior's breath. The three-stage breathing and warrior's breath precedes the meditative breathing exercise. Now, you can use your own warm-up exercises or relaxation techniques if you practice yoga or if you have some particular uh, physical disability that prevents you from doing any of the exercises you see in this video then go ahead and use what you're familiar with what you're comfortable with if you are disabled in some way you can do some of these exercises sitting down in all cases you must be as comfortable as possible and do not stretch yourself beyond what you're capable of doing and don't hurt yourself and just take it really easy and be gentle with yourself so having said that uh, let me then explain that in part two the three stage breathing you'll need to do it pretty much exactly as it is depicted we do it uh, sitting down some people like to do it standing up. I would advise doing it sitting down because if you get a little bit dizzy, you, you want to be sitting. Uh, the meditative breathing that we are going to show begins immediately after the three-stage breathing and the warrior's breath exercise is not going to be depicted in its entirety. We're just going to show you, you know, that we do these exercises in this particular order and then go immediately into the meditative breathing. Once you have watched this video once or twice or maybe three times and you've gotten all of the instructions firmly implanted into your mind or understood by you, then you will be able to use the part three audio presentation which will auditorily lead you through the same exercises you're going to see in this video and then will take you directly into the meditative breathing exercise. Obviously there's a reason for this because if we're going to do a video and show you know a group of people just lying down and meditating and you're supposed to have your eyes closed during that portion you're not going to be watching it so we're just going to depict it for you the beginning of it so you'll just see it at the very beginning but you understand that when you actually do it you'll be listening to the audio part three which will lead you through the entire meditative exercise from start to finish so let's go to part one and i'm going to explain to you as briefly as possible what's going on and do some counting so that you'll know exactly how to do these exercises. They're, they're basically very simple. There's nothing complicated about it at all. Okay, so let's go to part one. Here 
here you see our young ladies preparing to do a little loosening up exercise. They're going to be breathing deeply and normally. Uh, they're not going to be using pipe breath and they're going to be rotating their wrists. This is to loosen up the wrists and the arms. Now some people prefer to just jangle or wave their wrists around but we kind of prefer moving some in slow ways uh, just getting things started very slowly. You can do this sitting down also. Now they're going to be rotating their ankles. Six in and six out on each maneuver. Uh, you can do this from a sitting position also. Just rotate your ankles around and make your joints feel very loose and relaxed. If you have any physical problems with your feet or with your legs, you know, just do what you're capable of doing. Don't hurt yourself. The whole point of it, the exercise is to just relax and loosen up just a little bit and also to breathe deeply and normally while you're doing this. And the next exercise, or the next maneuver, is going to be uh, swinging the arms around. And you want to have your shoulders very loose for this, and to swing around as far as you can, and turn your head around looking to the back with you. Don't swing around and leave your head facing forward. Um, do this just very gently. Obviously it's better to do this when standing up, but if you're not able to stand up, like for example if you have dizzy spells or vertigo or whatever, you can do it sitting down. This is called the side stretch. Arms up and do stretches to, from one side to the other. So you start out with their arms up and now they're stretching up kind of a ballet maneuver and then bring the arm way over the head and kind of stretch the sides. You're supposed to be paying attention to doing belly breathing while you're doing this. Do this and stretch it really really nice you know put a little stretch into it but don't bounce. Bouncing is not supposed to be good. And then you stretch over to the other side and just put some stretch into your side now you may want to create your own exercise routine but if you like this one just follow it and get yourself habituated to doing this series of simple exercises and then come back up Now, lift your arms again and bring them up over your head. Put your hands together in the prayer position. Bring it down to your chest. And then back up again and then down. As you can see, these are really very gentle exercises. Into the prayer position over your head down to your chest and then back up and then out and down and all the while you're doing this be paying some attention to your breathing you're supposed to be breathing with your diaphragm and learning how to breathe with your diaphragm while you perform these maneuvers and these maneuvers, these little exercises, are very gentle and very easy, so it's not going to distract your attention too much away from practicing proper breathing. Now you put your hands behind your back, link your fingers together, a little bit of a stretch on your upper shoulders. And now the girls are going to bend over slowly with your hands behind your back and then kind of stretch your arms up as far as you can towards your head putting some stretch in there 
And now you're going to let your arms loose. Go down into a kneeling position. This is a fun little stretch called the cat. Now, what you do is you take a deep breath. And when you take that deep breath, your body is going to go into an arched position. Take that deep breath. Head up, belly down. And then exhale, belly up, head down. Now inhale, and as you inhale, head goes up, belly goes down. This helps you to remember that when you breathe in, your belly should be going out. Exhale. And then breathe in. Head goes up, belly goes down and out. Breathe out. Back goes up, belly pulled in tight, head down. This is a good one for increasing flexibility in your spine also. Now just back into a sitting position. You want to put your feet together. Now this is something that uh, some people may not be able to do, especially if they have difficulty with joints or movement. But for those of you who are able to do it, it's a, it's a nice little stretch. You lean forward and you just kind of stretch gently. This pulls, stretches your legs, the inside of your thighs, your back, your neck. and then sit up straight. Okay, now you get into a cross-legged position. And you begin to lean your head to your right kind of put some stretch on those neck muscles. We want this to be completely gentle. So you stretch to one side and the other and then you turn your head as far as you can. And then you turn your head the other direction as far as you can. And you just kind of, you know, do it as far as you can with maybe a little extra effort to stretch those neck muscles, but you don't want to be hurting yourself. Remember, your neck is what supports your head, and it's your head-body connection, so you don't want to do any damage to it. Then lean your head way back, as you see, and then forward again. And then lean your head forward, try to get your chin to your chest. And then to the side, and gentle roll around, very controlled. You're not going to be loosely bobbling your head around. You want this to have, you know, very slow, very gentle control, stretching those neck muscles. As soon as the girls finish these neck rolls, they're going to pause for a moment, and then they're immediately going to begin Part two, three-stage breathing. This is where you use pipe breath. You breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth to a specific count. You begin by putting your hands at your waist, and this is to help you to feel the movement of your diaphragm. Your fingertips should be together, as you see here. And when you breathe in, your fingertips should move apart. Okay? So you're going to watch them do this one time and then we're going to count. Count
Okay, see they're breathing in and you see their fingertips moving apart. Looking at look at the belly. Their their belly is pushing out when their diaphragm moves down, taking in their breath. Breathe in two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three. Breathe out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold two, three. Breathe in two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three. Breathe out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold two, three. Breathe in two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three. Breathe out ha, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold two, three. Breathe in two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three. Breathe out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold two, three. Breathe in two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three. Breathe out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and relax. And after you do the first stage of the three stage breathing, you're supposed to relax for just a moment and let the vagus nerve do its work. You just sit there in a relaxed state, breathing normally. And just getting in touch with your body and how your body feels. Just relax, get in touch, breathe normally and deeply, pay attention to the movement of your diaphragm if possible, because now you're going to get ready for part two of the three stage breathing. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your hands up at your chest as you see the girls doing here, fingertips together. And here you're going to breathe in deeply with your diaphragm. And then when your belly goes out, you're going to continue trying to pull breath in as much as you can so that your chest actually expands also. Your belly is going to go out first and then as the air fills your lungs, your chest will expand. See how the, see how it's working? See the girl's fingertips moving apart? They've got their fingertips together in this way so that you can see how the chest is moving. And you need to be doing this yourself. Put your hands, hook your thumbs under your arms or right around your sides. Put your fingertips together and then when you breathe in after your belly fills up, then your chest will begin to expand out and then you'll feel that chest area filling up with air all the way up into the upper reaches of your lungs okay so let's see they're breathing in two three four five six hold two three breathe out ha four five six seven eight nine hold two three breathe in two three four five six hold two three breathe out saying ha four five six seven eight nine hold two three breathe in two three four five six hold two three breathe out say ha four five six seven eight nine hold two three breathe in two three four five six hold two three breathe out say ha 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and rest. Once again, you relax and you just breathe normally, letting the vagus nerve do its work. Pay attention to your diaphragm. You should be breathing with your diaphragm, belly breathing, normal breaths, not pipe breath. Okay, so just relax, breathe normally. And remember, all of the three-stage breathing is pipe breath. So if you need to do this over again, and remember, remember pipe breath. Put your hands up behind your shoulders or behind your neck, whatever is most comfortable. And this is going to bring the air right up into the very top part of your lungs. You're going to breathe in with the diaphragm. It's going to expand all the way up into the upper areas of your chest. Okay, so we're only going to do this a few times because people generally get a little tired with their arms hanging around up in the air like that. And also, you're not going to have any fingertips expanding that are going to show you that your chest is expanding. You're just going to have this feeling of your shoulders and your arms moving up a little bit as your air moves up into the top reaches of your lungs. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three. Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, Three. So you just do this about six times or three times if six times is a little too long to have your arms in the air. After you're done with this part of the three stage breathing, then you're going to just bring your arms down gently and naturally and you're going to relax and you're going to breathe normally and let the vagus nerve do its work. Just relax and breathe normally. This is the end of the three-stage breathing process. You have the waist, the chest, and then behind the neck. Okay, your hands in the three positions. That's why it's called the three-stage breathing. It's done with pipe breath. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Now we're getting ready to do what's called warrior's breath. Just a little practice. You put your arms up and you reach up and you grab the air and you pull it down. And when you pull it down, you say, ha. You breathe in normally. No pipe breath. You breathe in and then grab the air and pull it down and say, ha. Okay. Ha. about 12 times okay and then after you've done it you just let your hands drop down onto your lap and you rest and you breathe normally and then you do it a second round of 12 times ready get ready to reach up and grab that air when, when, when you take your breath and then breathe out when you pull the air down ready <gasps> ha 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 Ha! 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 
and then that's the second time and then you do it the third time ready After you've finished relaxing for a moment or two after doing pipe breath and you've allowed all the different sensations to assimilate into your body and you can feel some changes taking place. You've done some relaxation, you've done some real good deep breathing exercises and now you've done the warrior's breath which helps you to really empty the lungs of all the stale old air and now you're all fresh and ready to completely relax and go into a meditative state at this point you're going to be just sitting in this position and I'm going to take you through bioenergetic breathing we call it Baha now that is an Irish Gaelic word that means life and it's spelled B-E-A-T-H-A, -A, but it's pronounced Baha. So when we breathe in, I say Ba. When you breathe out, I say Ha. Now you don't need to be saying this yourself. All you do is just listen to me as I say Ba Ha while you do the breathing. And we're just demonstrating this here because once again, this is going to be on the audio portion. I'm going to take you through a rather lengthy period of this round bioenergetic breathing. So here you just see the fact that the girls are sitting here and they are doing the bioenergetic breathing. They are hearing me saying to them ba and they breathe in and then ha they breathe out. And it's also helpful when you breathe out yourself, if you feel like it, only if you feel like it, to also say a very gentle ha ah, as you exhale. Because when you say this ha, ah, it constricts the upper pharyngeal passage and it gives you a little pipe breathing, okay? Because in general, you're not doing pipe breathing in this exercise. This is normal breathing. You're just breathing in deeply through the nose and out through the mouth. But if you say ha very gently, I mean not even loud enough to really make much of a sound, then you'll be giving a little bit of constriction during the exhalation to the pharyngeal passage and that'll give extra stimulus to the vagus nerve. So as soon as we finish the bioenergetic breathing or the round breathing, the Baha portion of the program, then you will want to go right from there to lying down and getting ready for the meditative portion. Okay, so you'll want to have a cushion nearby for your head and maybe a light blanket to put over you because when you go into deep meditation you do tend to get a little bit chilled and you want to be warm. So, once you have finished listening to the portion of the audio that takes you through the Baja round breathing, then you will lie down and you will cover yourself and get comfortable and then the meditative portion will begin. I will continue to help you count your breathing and I will continue to give you audio instructions. And I will be reading some things to you while you're in meditation to help you concentrate on the seed, the meditative seed. So thank you once again for sharing this with us and I hope you enjoyed our video and our explanation of these breathing exercises. Thank you. This is a meditation audio recording.
Do not listen to it while driving or operating any kind of equipment or machinery. I am going to assume that you've listened to parts one and two, and you will have learned that you need to do a series of warm-up exercises, and hopefully you will have practiced those exercises in advance of listening to this audio portion of the program, because this part is going to begin at the end of the warm-up exercises. I'm going to assume that you have completed your warm-up exercises and that you are ready to begin the three-stage breathing. As you know, the three-stage breathing is going to lead directly into the bioenergetic or round breathing, the Baja portion of the program. After that, you will be led directly into the meditative portion of the program. But there's going to be a little space of silence before that begins, so that if you only have time to do the three-stage breathing and the round breathing at any given time, you can do that. If you have more time, or if it's uh, in the evening perhaps, and you want to do this before going to sleep, then you just continue to let the audio play, and it will take you all the way through to the meditative portion of the program. So let's begin. We're going to do three-stage breathing, and remember, three-stage breathing is pipe breath. You breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, saying ha, ha, like you're trying to put some moisture on your glasses to clean them, and thanks to members of our forum for suggesting that as a way to explain exactly how the mouth is supposed to feel when you do this particular exercise. Okay, ready? First step, you're going to put your hands on your waist with your fingertips together. And you're going to breathe deeply with your diaphragm in through the nose, pipe breath, constricted, remember, and out through the mouth saying ha. Ready? Let's begin. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. Breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold, two, three. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. Breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, Hold, two, three. Breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold, two, three. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three. Breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, 
five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and relax. Just relax for a few moments. Get in touch with your body. Notice all your body's sensations. Breathe normally and deeply. Just relaxing. Feeling comfortable and at ease. Breathing normally. Okay, now let's get ready for the second stage. Put your hands up at your chest with your fingertips together. Hook your thumbs around the side of your chest under your arms perhaps. And then take a couple of normal breaths. Get ready. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. Breathe out. Ha. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold. Two, three. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. Breathe out. Ha. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold. Two, three. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. Breathe out. Ha. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and relax. Let the vagus nerve do its work. Get in touch with your body. Notice all the sensations in your body. Breathing normally. Remember always to breathe with your diaphragm. Your belly should be moving out when you breathe. Okay, take a couple deep breaths and put your hands up behind your neck. Or if you can place your hands on your shoulders, on the back of your shoulders, do that. Whatever's most comfortable. You're going to be taking the air up into the very tops of your lungs. Ready? Begin. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. Breathe out. Ha. Ah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold. Two, three. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, ah. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, hold, two, three, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, breathe out, ha, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and relax. Pay close attention to your body. Close attention. Let the vagus nerve do its work. Just relax, breathing normally. Notice all the sensations in your body. Notice how your diaphragm feels when you breathe. Notice how your belly pushes out when you breathe and relax. Okay. Now, let's get ready for the warrior's breath. The warrior's breath. You put your hands up by your sides, bent at the elbows. When you breathe in sharply through the nose, you reach up with your hands into the air. And when you breathe out, you say ha through the mouth, like a warrior getting ready to go into battle. Okay, ready? Begin. Ha! 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 Last one. Just relax now. You might feel just a little lightheaded. Relax and breathe normally. Okay. Let's get ready and do it again. Hands up, reach up, grab the air, and say ha. Huh. Ready? Begin. Last one. Ha. Okay, relax. Breathe deeply and normally. Get in touch with your body. Notice all the sensations in your body. Now, let's do it one more time. Reach up with your hands from your elbows. Grab the air and pull it down. Breathe in through the nose. This is a normal breathing, not pipe breath. Out through the mouth, shouting, ha. Ready? Begin. Ha! 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 Just relax. Breathing normally. Breathe deeply with your belly. Pay attention to all the sensations in your body. Pay a special attention to your breathing. Make sure you're breathing with your diaphragm and that your belly is moving out when your diaphragm contracts and moves down. Now, we're going to move into bioenergetic breathing, round breathing. When I say ba, you breathe in. 
When I say ha, you breathe out. And if you can breathe in as long as I'm saying ba, or at least continue to try to inhale slowly and gently until you hear the word ha, then you reverse the process. You begin to exhale and try to exhale as long as you can until I say ba again. The word baha is Irish Gaelic for life. So when I say ba, ha, I am saying the words life. And when I say ba, you're breathing in life. And when I say ha, you're exhaling all of those things that you don't need in your body for your life. You're exhaling toxins. You're exhaling tension and stress. Breathing in life and breathing out all those things that don't contribute to your health and your well-being. This is normal deep belly breathing. Breathe with your diaphragm. Breathe with your belly. Ready? Ba ha 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 Ba Ba ha 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 Ba Ba ha 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 Ba Ba ha 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 
バッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバッハバハバハバハバハババハバハバハバハババハバハバハバハバハバハバハバハババハバハバハバハバハバハバハバ
Ha. Ha. Ba. Ha. Ba. Ha. Ba. Ha. Ba. Ha. Ba. Ba ha 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 Relax your body. Relax completely. You may wish to lie down and rest or prepare for your meditative exercise. If you have a blanket available, pull it over you. Make sure you're warm. Make sure your head and neck are comfortable. Make sure your arms are arranged comfortably. Don't cross your legs or ankles. Just lie flat and completely comfortable. Or however you find yourself to be comfortable. On a sofa, on your bed, on the floor, wherever you are. Just make sure you're completely comfortable. Now you're relaxed and comfortable and warm. And I want you to just listen to my voice and follow the instructions and continue to relax and breathe deeply with your belly. Let's start out with just a few pipe breaths. 
I'm going to count them for you. And this is going to just get you started. Okay? So get ready. Take a couple of normal breaths. Make sure you're comfortable. All right. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. Breathe out. Ha. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold. Two, three. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three. Breathe out. Ha. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Continue to breathe this way until your body automatically shifts to normal breathing. I'm going to read the prayer of the soul to you. If you can, time your breathing so that each phrase is coordinated with an in-breath or an out-breath. So let's get ready and begin. O oh, divine cosmic mind, holy awareness in all creation, Carried in the heart, ruler of the mind, savior of the soul, live in me today. Be my daily bread as I give bread to others. Help me grow in knowledge of all creation. Clear my eyes that I may see. Clear my ears that I may hear. Cleanse my heart that I may know and love the holiness of true existence, divine cosmic mind. O oh, divine cosmic mind, holy awareness in all creation, carried in the heart, ruler of the mind, 
savior of the soul. Live in me today. Be my daily bread as I give bread to others. Help me grow in knowledge of all creation. Clear my eyes that I may see. Clear my ears that I may hear. Cleanse my heart that I may know and love the holiness of true existence, divine cosmic mind. O oh, divine cosmic mind, holy awareness in all creation, carried in the heart, ruler of the mind, savior of the soul, live in me today. Be my daily bread as I give bread to others. Help me grow in knowledge of all creation. Clear my eyes that I may see. Clear my ears that I may hear. Cleanse my heart that I may know and love the holiness of true existence, divine cosmic mind. O oh, divine cosmic mind, holy awareness in all creation, carried in the heart, ruler of the mind, savior of the soul, live in me today. Be my daily bread as I give bread to others. Help me grow in knowledge of all creation. Clear my eyes that I may see. Clear my ears that I may hear. Cleanse my heart that I may know and love the holiness of true existence, divine cosmic mind. O oh, divine cosmic mind, holy awareness in all creation, carried in the heart, ruler of the mind, savior of the soul, live in me today. Be my daily bread as I give bread to others. Help me grow in knowledge of all creation. Clear my eyes that I may see. Clear my ears that I may hear. 
cleanse my heart that I may know and love the holiness of true existence divine cosmic mind O oh, divine cosmic mind holy awareness in all creation carried in the heart ruler of the mind savior of the soul live in me today be my daily bread as I give bread to others help me grow in knowledge of all creation clear my eyes that I may see clear my ears that I may hear cleanse my heart that I may know and love the holiness of true existence divine cosmic mind continue to breathe and relax Divine Cosmic Mind bless you all.